I'm here on step 11 of Free Code Camp's New Responsive Web Design Certificates fourth course, Learn HTML Forms by Building a Registration Form. So the first step we have to do is actually create that form element. We need to include an, a specific attribute, and it's the action attribute. And so the reason we have to include this link is this is where all the data is going to go once we submit our form. We're specifying where the information goes. Next, we're going to include three field set elements. And you can notice that I've indented here by two tabs because um, it's inside. It's a child of field set is a child of form. And so we're going to make three of these. And these field sets, just as a reminder, group similar things up in a form together graphically for the user. So that's why we have these three boxes. Different elements are going to go inside. In order to actually make this form, the user has to know what they're submitting. So we have to create some labels. So we're going to use four of these initially inside that first field set element. OK, so now we're actually going to put something in the label. You can see on the right hand side, the information is showing up on the right. Currently, there's nowhere for the user to actually input any data, but we'll be doing that shortly. There we go. OK, so you might have noticed it looks kind of funny on the right um, because everything's on the same line. That's just not how you want it to be. Um, and so by default, the, the default CSS for a label is it's going to be inline. Um, and so it's not going to each, um, if we go back to our index at HTML, each new line here, each label element doesn't mean that it's actually good. There's not going to be a line break. So instead of after the colon right here, instead of there being a line break, everything is just all kind of squished as far as you can go until um, they have, it's required to go to the next line. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure everything is on a new line. So labels, the target, we want this to um, work on all labels. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the display instead of inline, we're going to make it block. And boom, everything is on a different line. Next, we're going to set a margin. And so we, the first, um, if we're using two, this is going to affect the top and bottom. And this is going to uh, affect the left and right. So we want some padding on the top and bottom, but we don't want anything on the side. So that's why we're going to do 0 0.5 REM and then 0. And there we go. So if we look at that, first, it affects everything, left and right, um, top and bottom. But if we just do, if we add that, now, left and right are, are zero. OK, next, we actually need some sort of input. The user needs to be able to add their own information to the form. And so we're going to add input. Um, and it's a self-closing tag, so we can use. We don't have to put a closing slash on this first one, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and if you notice here, I added a space. Um, if I didn't have that space, if you look closely right here, it's going to be a little bit too squished. So we have to make sure that we add a space after each colon. Forgot a space right here. There we go. OK, for this next step, we have to specify what type of input do we want to do? By default, it's text, but we want to make sure that the browser knows exactly what we want. So we're going to actually specify this for everything. So the first two are going to be um, text, first name. Names are just bits of text. And then next, email actually has a, uh, a special sort of input. Um, and the reason it's important for the browser to know is sometimes you might have noticed maybe on your phone, if you're on a website, it might have suggested, hey, 
here's the first name. Oh, hey, why don't you put your email and you can just click a button and it'll fill it in for you. That's because the developer who was ever making the website did a good job of specifying what type of text was in there, if it worked properly. Sometimes it works a little wonky, um, which is kind of unfortunate, which is why we wanna make sure we do a good job here. So we're gonna set the type to email. And the last one is password. Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is we're gonna add a submit button. So we're gonna add this at the very end, right here on line 20, after all the field sets, right? Because all they're all inside of this one form. So even though the field sets are different groups of things, it's all part of the same form. So what we wanna do is we're gonna add another input element. And you can see the default is text, but we wanna specify it's a submit button. So when we submit this, um, this form, it's gonna send to this website. That's where the, it's um, looking for code. And so we wanna uh, specify a value right here in my browser. The default value is submit query or query, but um, we wanna specify it ourselves to just submit. There we go. Okay, now we wanna make sure that our users Make sure they. Um, we want to make sure our users fill out every single part of our form, which is why we're going to add this required attribute to everything in this first um, field set because they could just submit maybe only last name but not first name, or they wouldn't make a password, so we could run into issues. So we're going to sub, um, add this required attribute to all inputs. So if they don't. If they have not filled out um, all of the required elements, they just will not be able to submit the form. Okay, for this last step, what we can do is we can actually kind of do a little um, extra validation. If we want to make sure that our users are submitting a password that's at least eight characters, um, we can do min length equals eight, which means they're only able to... Um, submit or create, uh, submit the form if they have at least eight characters in that new password. And there we have it.